preach a little Christmas sermon from these scriptures and real short and sweet and simple. I want you to look with me at, uh, we're going to talk about Let's look at these wise men just for a minute, but that's not my text. My text is going to be Matthew 2 and 13, but I'll read a few verses before. You know how we call these men the wise men that came from the east, and uh, they came and presented gifts. Uh, Verse 11, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. And then we see verse 13, the Bible said, And when they were departed, talking about the wise men, or the three, or ever how many it was, it said, When they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, and take the young child and his mother, and flee into Egypt, and be thou there until I bring thee word, for Herod will seek the young child." To destroy him. Now, what I felt like preaching to us this morning was this. I want to preach on how to survive after Christmas. All right? How to survive after Christmas. Uh, When you think of Christmas and Christ's birth, uh, and we have we have tried our best to tell you how important and, and powerful that is, and how miraculous it is. But then, then we see after, uh, and you know, there's there's some question here about uh, how old Jesus was when these wise men came, and some say maybe two years old or what. But you know, that's all a speculation. It does say that they came to him in a house, but of course, you know, if the baby was born, if you if you was the, if you was the dad, the next day you'd find a house for him to go to if you could, wouldn't you? So it could have very well been when he was just newborn. But Herod, you know, everybody didn't love Christmas. There were some enemies of Christmas. There were some enemies of the Christ child. How many knows that this morning we we still have enemies of the Christ child? You know, some of you are having trouble this morning. And the very reason you're having trouble is because you've got Christ in you. The Bible says, As many as will live godly shall suffer persecution. Some... Y'all going to help me preach this morning? All I know to do is preach. I'm not good at filling in between, you know, this and that. Uh, if I can't preach, it, we'll, just, we'll just whistle a little Christmas carol or something. But I'm going to preach to you a little bit this morning. You see, when Christmas is over, we've got to survive. Now, what, I, what would have happened, Brother Dennis, if this child who was born, I mean, I mean, they come to the shepherd shepherd's field and a heavenly home. In that atmosphere. Huh? Brother Jason? Brother Jason can preach at a Christmas play. Huh? That's right. He preached with a pot hanging up there. You should have been here. Huh? What about those wise men coming and they said, Hey, we have seen a star in the east. Pray. But you know, then they left. The angels went away. The shepherds went away. It's kind of like here. Uh, Friday night, that everybody went away. Huh? Now what? Now it's clean. Now it's straightened up. Amen. Now it's lock up. Cut out the lights. Tell the rats we'll be back. Huh? Now all of this is gone. Now, now I want you to look right here. 
Amen. If this child does not survive after Christmas, then we are lost. And I want to tell you something else this morning. Hey Amen. You, you elders here uh, that have been here since the beginning. Hey Amen. You still got to make it, Sister Helen, to the very end. That's why I can't, I can't lay down and just, you got to have the same thing from me that you got from them old preachers in the tent out there. Huh? Hey Amen. It ain't over yet. We've got to survive. Brother and sister, listen to me. I feel like preaching to you. I could go through here and lay my hand on 75% of you that the devil's fighting right now. And the reason he's fighting you, amen, listen to me now, you preachers, uh, amen, don't you ever doubt, uh, amen, when you put your name down, Sister Lynn. Hey, Brother Dan, when you put your name on the list, you better draw your sword. Because it's a fight, Brother Jeff. Amen. God, the devil knows uh, when he looks down at your life, uh, he knew that little boy that got the Holy Ghost laying right there uh, all them years ago. Uh, amen, Sister Holly. Uh, he knows that little girl was raised in church uh, and can sing like a bird. Uh, amen. The devil don't like you. So when Christmas is over, we've got to still survive. Because Christ has got to live. He's got it, brother. He is in the hands of Joseph. Now, I want you to see a man that really didn't bargain for this. But now he's got to protect this baby, amen, until he gets to the age to die on the cross, amen. And so he moves on Joseph in a dream, and he gives him, listen to me now, he gives Joseph a divine strategy. That's what we've got to have. Brother Zane, if we don't have a move of God, we will not survive Christmas. we got to have a strategy. Brother Charlie, we don't know what's up. You don't seem worried about it. I hope you're not. I'm going to tell you. Amen. We've got to have a strategy. Linda, we got, if we're going to live, we got to have a strategy. If we're going to survive, we got to have a strategy. What if the economy fails? What if console stocks up enough coal and the market drops and they don't need any coal? If they don't need coal, they don't need you. You say, that doesn't sound right. That's the truth. How many knows that's true? Anybody here work for console? Huh? If they don't need the coal, they don't need you. What about the pipeline? What if, what if the gas prices, what, what if that keeps going down? What if the market, and they decide, well, it's, it's costing us more to produce this gas, then we're getting out of it. We'll just stop for a while. Let the market. What happens then? Huh? Come on now. We can't give up. We gotta survive. How do you survive after Christmas? You gotta have a divine strategy. You're not gonna get it without letting God speak to you. Some of you are here right now barely hanging on by the skin of your teeth. You don't even know if you're really saved or not this morning. You've got to survive Christmas. After Christmas, you've got to survive. Listen to this. Amen. As soon as the wise men left, notice what they did. Amen. They brought their gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh, brought them in there to that house. Uh, probably, I believe Jesus probably might believe was he was still a little baby like this right here, little boy. He might have been a little older, but there's no proof of that. Amen. Uh, uh, Herod wanted to get rid of all, so he went two years and down because he didn't know. He wanted to make sure. Amen. I'll tell you, when you get a hatred, when the devil puts a hatred in, in somebody's heart for the things of God, they'll spit on you, brother. Come on now, help me preach. Amen. We gotta survive some way. Amen. And when I say survive, I, I don't mean just, to, I mean the divine sovereignty gift of God of salvation has got to remain in our life. You know what happens to America? Amen. When this Judeo Christian Christ religion, you know why they hated George Bush so bad? Amen. Because when they asked him who his hero was, he said, my hero is Jesus Christ. And they they set on him from that point on, and the media and the liberals hated his guts. You say, well, he wasn't no Christian. I didn't say he was. I said he said his hero was Jesus Christ. Huh? Now, if it had said that his hero was, was you know, 
Mickey Mouse, they wouldn't have thought nothing about it. Y'all ain't helping me preach. I, I tell you, this world, this world system, amen, hates Jesus Christ. Herod hated Jesus because he knew if this king arose that he was going to have to take a back seat. But, brother, in order for us to, to, to survive in a world that hates Jesus, we're going to have to have a divine strategy. Hallelujah. Woo! Feel the Holy Ghost in here. Huh? i got to hurry. The divine strategy was not another nerve pill. Huh? In his sleep, when the wise men left, can you imagine going to bed that night, how restless he was, brother Sam? Had them three wise men and all this miraculous thing went on. He's got God himself laying in there in a the manger crying his head off. Huh? He met him, Mother Mary sitting over there trying to quiet him. And Joseph trying to get a little sleep. Uh, he met him, finally he falls off to sleep. Uh, and God visits him in a dream. Uh, he met him, God visited him in a dream. Uh, and he said, yeah, I'll tell you what you need to do. Uh, I want you to take this child uh, who I've already told you is the Son of God uh, who is going to save his people from their sin. Uh, I want you to take him from here. And I want you to go into Egypt uh, and stay until I tell you. Hallelujah. Come on now. I want you to look out there and sing Merry Christmas. Look out there. There's a blizzard. Come on now. You can look back now. I just thought I'd give you a little break. Huh? We got to have a divine strategy. How are we going to get through? I feel like I'm preaching to somebody here this morning. I really do. We got to have a strategy, brothers. We got to have a strategy. We got to have a strategy. How are we going to. God's, we got to hear the voice of God. we got to get this strategy from God. Go. Now, now here, now look, I want you to get this. Here's a guy, Joseph, who just went and paid his taxes. Now, how many of y'all, after you paid your taxes, still have some money to go to Egypt? Huh? Ain't no way. Brother Jerry, after, after that glorious day of tax day, if God say, go to Egypt, I'd have to say, you're yeah, right. <laughs> how are we going to get there? Huh? But you know what? Guess what had just happened? I said, guess what had just happened just, a, just that very day before? He had just had a man knock on his door with gold. G-O-L-D. It's still pretty popular right now. Huh? How many like to have like a little box of it? Huh? How much is it an ounce now? Anybody know? Huh? $950 an ounce? That'll get you to Egypt, won't it? Huh? How many knows this morning, how, how is he going to survive? He's going to survive not only with a divine strategy. He said, I want you to go down there, and here's how long I want you to stay. And I like what Brother Gabbard said. Uh, if you don't know where to go, uh, just remember the last thing God said, uh, where he told you to go, and stay right there till he tells you different. Hallelujah. Woo, sweet Lamb of God. I feel like preaching a little bit on how to survive uh, after Christmas. Praise God. Got to have a divine strategy. But we also have to have divine provision. Huh? Got to have divine provision. How are we going to get it done? Can you imagine if God had spoke to him, Brother Zane, if God had spoke to him the day before, he would have had to pull his old pockets out and say, how am I going to get to Egypt? But now he's got this gold and frankincense and myrrh. He's got the gifts of a king. Hey, Amen. I wouldn't doubt if he couldn't sell the frankincense and myrrh for a pretty good price. Uh, hey, Amen. So he went, he took that gold. Uh, hey, Amen. He put provisions. He loaded them on that donkey. And here him and his wife. Uh, hey, Amen. Notice how the family stayed together. You say, I don't know how I'm going to survive this. I'll tell all these kids to feed. I'll tell you what, you pull them in close to you, they're going to be your survival. Oh, am I doing any good this morning? Huh? How are we going to survive? We've got to have divine strategy. I can't get off of that. We've got to do it. That's why we're going to come and pray, amen, at least one day a week for the next month. Well, we get ready for Matt Homer to come in here and have revival. Amen, I'm going to tell you, amen, we, we're looking for God to move. Amen, it's a time like no other, Brother Zane. Amen, we got to have a strategy. Amen, and the strategy, what is the goal? The goal is to keep Jesus alive. Hallelujah. In our heart. Whatever it takes. 
How are we going to do it? Because we're going to do it with the provision that God God dealt with some men in the Middle East or in the Far East uh, to bring gold to a king. Uh, we're going to use the gold uh, that God provided. Uh, it's going to come from a source uh, that you're not aware of. Uh, and you'll have to say amen to that. Huh? Well, I feel the Holy Ghost. Huh? We're going to survive after. How many? I want to be. I want you to be honest. I want to see how many hands will say. I don't know how I'm going to survive through Christmas. We don't have any honesty in here. Oh, okay. Oh, we got a bunch. We got so many heads that nodding here. It's about to disturb us with all the racket. But I'll tell you, after Christmas, God does not intend to let you die. God does not intend to let you die. He does not intend to let this revival fire die in you. He said, I want you to stay. And they had enough provision to stay in a foreign country. And I don't know how long. I, I, I've tried to search this out. I don't know how long it was. Huh? But it was up to the time Herod died. Now, I guess I could have studied history and found out, you know, kind of how long it was. But I'll tell you what. That thing in your life that wants to kill you, it will die. Quiet now. Did you hear me? Come on, brother. You're not you're not disturbing us. It ain't you. Huh? I said, that thing that is wanting to destroy Christ in you, if you hold on, it will die in due time. And it came to pass that Herod died. And the Lord came and visited him again and said, it's time to go back. Come on. And I, is it Hosea, Brother Jason? Is it Hosea 11? Would you would you turn there? Is it, I think I saw Hosea 11. Huh? You ever, you, how, many, how many believes in divine providence? Divine providence. How many knows that? That God knew I was going to be a preacher the day I was conceived. Huh? How many knows that? How many knows divine providence? How many believes in divine sovereignty? Listen to this. Is is that 11 and 1? Is that the one? What does it say? You hear that? I believe. Do you believe that is prophecy right there? He said, I have called my son out of Egypt. God said, I have called my son. There's a coming out. How many understands there is a coming out? You may, you may be in that place in your life where you don't know you're just trying to survive. But there's coming a time when the time will come when God will call you out and say, it's time, amen, I'm going to call my son according to my divine will, according to my divine providence, according to my sovereignty. I'm going to call my son out of Egypt. And here he comes. Next time we read of it, he's 12 years old in the temple. I'm telling you what you say. What if now? That I don't. I don't believe. Now you, this is hard to understand. Amen. I don't believe that God would let Jesus die prematurely. I don't believe. But, but, and I believe the Lord is going to save this whole wide world. But you know what? He's going to use you to do it, and you to do it, and He's going to use you to do it. He's going to use me to do it. Amen. He don't need me, but He's going to use. He didn't need Joseph, per se. He could have surrounded Jesus in a bubble of of thick wrought iron that nobody could ever touch him. But he said, I know a place he'll be safe in the hands of this just man named Joseph who hears my voice and gets divine strategy and uses divine provision to fulfill divine providence. Huh? Come on now. Woo! How are you going to survive? When you put up the Christmas wrapping, amen, and you put up the Christmas tree, and you put the ornaments back in the box, and the bills have all come due. Hallelujah. I'll tell you a little. You can stay alive a few.
few weeks on this street, praise God. Amen. And after that, uh, amen, you're going to listen to the voice of God. Uh, amen. You're going to be broke, uh, but you're going to be serving a God. Uh, amen. That can feed. Uh, amen. You buy Brook Cherith. Uh, if you'll go there and stay till he tells you to leave. Sometimes young people, you know, that hadn't been down that road, they'll hit a snag, and I can see the look on their face. But after living for 52 years and preaching for 30 of them, huh, I've seen it all before, and I hear the voice of God say, I will never leave you or forsake you. I will go with you always. You can, this gospel can survive even after COVID. Can you say amen? And you can survive. How many wants to be a survivor? Huh? How many survivors? How many wants to be a survivor? You got to have a strategy. I'm serious about this. And it's got to come from God. Here's the way you, here's where you got to go if you're going to survive. We gotta have divine provision. We can't just make it on nickels and dollars and cents. We gotta have divine help. And then we gotta have confidence in divine providence of God. What did God say? What about the church? Do you, do you really think do you really think the devil's gonna be able to wipe the church out? No way. He may wipe you out if you let him, but you don't have to. Can you say amen? Say a real good amen. Okay. All right. Has everybody been served, Brother Destin? All right. Has everybody got a treat? You should say yes because I just preached to you. Wasn't that a treat? Oh, you've hurt me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's stand. <clears throat>